Before committing yourself to fly or lumber along in close proximity to your horse, it is advisable for the longevity oriented to do some sensible and thorough preparation. This preparation determines the pecking order, defines the handler's space, and establishes some reliable basic responses to specific aids or influences. The correct preparation of the horse during basic training helps prevent some of the most common problems seen in competitions. Horses that don't go forward or steer very well and look less than their best because of poor carriage or responsiveness. Or horses that do not go forward on command but end up being towed by the handler, usually unsuccessfully. Or horses which run past the handler, making them more likely to trip and fall or more likely to get kicked. And horses which do not respect the handler's space or person, but press or turn in front of them. First, it's essential to determine the horse's degree of sensitivity and responsiveness, and its acceptance of new influences. Before asking for responses, you must desensitize the horse so that you can then selectively sensitize it. This desensitization merely consists of running the whip all over the horse's body and legs until it accepts that without concern. After the horse calmly accepts the touch of the whip all over his body, a useful exercise is to teach him to step back when gently tapped on the chest. This response has no specific application in the show ring, but it is an essential response if there is or is likely to be any question about pecking order, manners, safety, or manageability. The rein should be loose except in the case of real problems of control. The most common fault is for the handler to try to back the horse with the rein, which serves no purpose in this context. The butt end of the whip should be used rather than the stinging end, and it should be used in the middle of the chest. When you see some positive response, stroke the horse a few times with the whip as reward. The whip should be used at the tempos that would be appropriate for the response, not a desperate nervous tattoo. This gives the horse time to think. It is important to reward initially the faintest glimmer of comprehension. Here, an experienced handler stands further away from a young horse of unknown reactions for safety reasons. It is interesting to see the young horse assume a position of submission of its own accord by lowering its head when it obeys the handler's aids. Notice that when the horse is gazing off into the distance or paws the ground, the handler changes nothing but sticks to her point quietly. By the end of just a few minutes, the horse is the epitome of submission. Another useful exercise, both for control and for smoothing the performance in exciting circumstances, is to teach the horse to lower its head on command. This response can do much to establish attentiveness and submission, and to make the horse safer to handle in difficult situations. It's especially important and useful with stallions. In addition, it can help to stabilize and correct the presentation for the walk when showing if the horse is tense or high-headed. The action of the rein should be casual and not too quick in order to allow the horse time to think. This very little handled youngster shows good responses. Note the softness of the eye and casual attitude when she responds. This youngster is high-headed and inattentive. He would be very difficult to show in hand without some preparation. He is quick to respond and his attention is immediately captured and he becomes calm and soft-eyed each time he drops his head. This training response is important for improving the manageability and responsiveness of the horse. It is taught at halt and walk, but its only application in showing is when the horse is tense and high-headed in walk or completely unmanageable at standstill or has an unfortunate posture which makes it appear to have bad neck conformation.
Otherwise, the horse should stand tall and alert with raised, stretched neck. Still another exercise which may prove helpful in establishing submission, attentiveness, obedience, and safety is the displacement of the shoulder. The whip is used on the side of the shoulder in the same casual, not too hasty way as it was used on the chest. Most often, the horse will step forward instead of sideways. In that case, it is important to return to the previous lesson of stepping backwards in order to clarify and to avoid jerking and pulling on the horse's head. When the whip is used to stroke the horse in reward as well as to give aids, you can avoid anxiety about the whip. If the horse fusses or backs up but does not go forward into the handler's space or try to go past the handler, the same quiet aid can be repeated. At the first sign of comprehension, remember, pressure is taken off and reward is given. The handler is not distracted by head tossing or pawing, but keeps her mind on the issue, so she is ready to reward the first sign of correct response. Frequently throughout the work, the horse is tested as to its acceptance of the quiet touch of the whip. If you are practicing more than one exercise with your horse during a session, you'll want to repeat the desensitizing technique in preparation for the next exercise. Here we're seeing displacement of the haunches, another exercise which is not required in competition but may improve attentiveness, manageability, and safety. If the horse anticipates your action, placing the whip over the neck shows it to the other eye. This often settles the horse down. Again, the whip signals a step back if the horse tries to go forward to invade your space. Quiet perseverance is essential in the face of the inevitable misunderstandings and experiments.